Today I'm installing a new luggage rack. Uh, and before I put the luggage rack on, because after it's on, I won't be able to polish the trunk uh, with the machine. It'll have to all be done by hand. So what I'm doing today is doing the finished touches on the, on the paint. You can see, I did a video a while back on how to paint from your garage. Um, and I don't know if you can catch this in the... I can zoom in on it. If we can get good focus. Um, when you do your clear coat, you're going to get some orange peel. Um, and then we knocked down the orange peel a bit um, after about two days. But there's still some finish work to do on here. And you can see, uh, see how the light is uh, breaking up on the edges. It's kind of an eggshell or an orange peel. You can see that there's, it's just not absolutely flat and shiny. Um, and so the trick with that is that you have to do some wet sanding. Um, the wet sanding that, that I'm doing is I'm starting with a, a, a 2000 grit. 2000 takes a very small amount of the, uh, the clear coat down. And what you're trying to do on that is just get it to the point where it's just clear coat and there's no texture whatsoever on the clear coat. And you can see now, um, after you uh, you sand it with the 2000 and then see I got uh, I got the 2000 here and then uh, the, the 2000 makes scratches so then I have a, a 5000 wet sanding pad that knocks off the scratches for that and then when you get to the to that point then you can take it and 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 buff it down now you see how the light is not diffused or breaking up uh, and this is all before uh, putting wax or, or any kind of uh, finish polish on there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and cut away and do some sanding, get finished up on this. When I get to the buffing, um, I'll, I'll add to the video on that. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's what I'm working on today. Real quick one. All right, so here's another close-up of uh, in-between sanding periods. You can see this area over here looks nice and shiny, but... You can see that it's a little rough by looking at the way the light breaks up. And when you um, get your first coat of sanding on there, you can see what the wet sanding does is it knocks off the tops. Um, and you can see it a lot better where you need to go back and sand. When you get to the point where the whole area is dull like that, then you know that your sanding is complete. But if you, if when you dry it off and you wipe it dry, you can still see high and low spots. Having a light overhead is really helpful. <laughs> so you can see these, uh, these high and low spots. Um, so you know you still have to do some sanding in that. So the biggest thing to, to be concerned when you're, uh, when you're wet sanding is that you have to make sure that there's no dirt. The, the surface has to be absolutely clean and all of the uh, the towels and everything that you're using, they have to be absolutely clean right out of the washer. Um, and you don't want to introduce any, um, any abrasives by accident. And so what I got here is a bucket. This is by Adams Polishes. Um, this bucket has um, inside of it, I got some nice warm water because it's cold out here today. But inside of it, it has... Um, it has a screen and the idea behind that screen is that when you're rinsing your, your rag and you're going to clean it off every now and then and, and, and wash your, um, your, your surface area off, but when you're cleaning your rag, you want the sediment to go to the bottom and you don't ever want that sediment to get back on the rag again. So having a screen like this keeps all of your sanding materials in the clean water and any heavy sediments will go to the bottom and that will make sure that while you're sanding, the, the grit of sandpaper that you picked is the most abrasive thing <laughs> that's going to be used on the surface. You don't ever want to introduce anything else um, that will change that and make deeper scratches. Um, so that's a neat little trick. Get a bucket like that. Even if you don't have to go buy one from uh, Adams Polishes here, um, you, can, you can take like a, a, a salad calendar, a colander, and put it in the bottom of a Home Depot bucket and you'll get the same effect. Um, the idea is just basically to keep your, um, your, your cloth and your sanding materials away from the bottom of the bucket so that the, the sediment will go to the bottom. 
All right, so there you go. Um, the whole flat surface of the trunk has been wet sanded first with uh, 2000, and then um, over the 2000, we went with uh, 5000. The 5000 grit knocks down the uh, any of the scratches that you would have seen from the 2000, uh, and it just makes it kind of a dull sheen. But you'll notice all of that orange peel and eggshell, any of those surface imperfections, those are all gone. Um, and so now it's just a perfectly flat surface. Well, flat's curved, but uh, um, even on this test area here, I went over this test area where I've already polished once, uh, but I went over this with the 5000 so you could see the 5000 itself doesn't do a whole lot, but it pulls off those scratches. So uh, the next step here is we're going to get the Ryobi uh, um, uh, buffer polisher. <laughs> Uh, it's a little six inch dilly we got at Home Depot, really inexpensive, but very nice piece of equipment. Um, and we're going to put some Meguiar's on there. Now Meguiar's has a couple of different types of polishes. Um, and you can see on the side, it's kind of like uh, when you're getting hot sauce, they have a Coville scale. But in the case of the Meguiar's, they have a, um, a, a cut scale to tell you whether it's a light cut or a heavy cut. Um, because we went right from sanding, we're going to use the medium cut. Um, and uh, I might even go to the light cut after the fact, depending on what it looks like. Uh, but I just wanted to show you the difference between the, the products. Um, if you were to do the light cut after doing a sanding like this, you would have to do a lot of buffing. It would take you a long time. Uh, this this uh, medium cut is, uh, is good for this type of uh, work, but you don't want to use this for every application because it's abrasive and it will start to take off your... Uh, um, your clear coat. So what you're trying to protect here is the the, the depth of your clear coat um, Without having to put another coat on there. We just want to make it so that the top of it is flat and and there's no um, No eggshell or orange peel. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is this This Ryobi here. First of all, Ryobi's make a decent product. Here's a Product numbers if you want to have a look at these online. I'll, I'll put a link in the description um, but the problem is that when you buy them, it comes with an assortment of pads. But when you go back to the hardware store to buy more pads, the Ryobi doesn't sell a 6-inch pad. They sell a, a 5 to 7-inch pad, and it's way too big. And I don't know if you can see in there, if that, if that uh, uh, elastic part is too big, it gets up in there and it gets caught in the mix. So you don't want to put an oversized pad in there. What we did, though, is we found... Uh, at the AutoZone, they sell these uh, microfiber pads, uh, and you get more for the money anyway. So uh, I would that's a complaint I have about Ryobi. Uh, your pads are, you really need to get better about your, your consumable products. Um, but uh, in this case, uh, AutoZone had a good solution. So that's my, that's my rant for today. I'm going to go ahead and start buffing this, and I'll, I'll check back in once we get it to where it's shining nice. I just wanted to... Capture real quick before I do this last section. This is the last section that has uh, been sanded and not yet polished. But you can see the difference from the sanded versus polished. Um, the trick with the polish is um, when you're working the machine, um, work it in small sections because you don't want the, um, um, the medium, the Meguiar's polish, you don't want it to dry out. Um, and so um, after you polish the section, you want to remove it and dry it off. That's why I have a couple of towels. I've got my ShamWow back there. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do this one, and then we'll move on to paste wax. All right, so a quick recap. <clears throat> we we're getting rid of the orange peel and, and check marks. You can see how clean, cleanly you can see that the light reflecting now. It's, uh, there's no haze. It's uh, nice and sharp. <clears throat> That'll take a nice coat of wax once we put that in there. So uh, the steps were wet sanding uh, with uh, 2,000, then 5,000. This is a, uh, a pad. And uh, a couple of graduations of um, uh, polishing with the Meguiar's, starting first with the medium cut to take all the sanding marks off, fine cut to clean it up and make it look glassy, and then the Ultra, ultra Pro Finishing Polish that will make it look like it is um, fresh, brand new, clean paint. 
um, and it's a deep wet look. So um, you see I have a bigger container of this because uh, <laughs> you're more likely to use that on a weekly basis than these other ones. These other ones are a bit more coarse and you only want to do that in case you're actually sanding, sanding off uh, orange peel. Um, the uh, Ryobi pol uh, buffing polisher, this uh, really an inexpensive, very versatile tool. Uh, again, I'm just a garage guy. Working in my garage, I uh, I don't have an unlimited budget, so I'm not going to spend money on all kinds of power tools. So when I find one that'll do more than one job, that's my that's my go-to. The only other nifty tool here is a bucket with a a screen in the bottom, so that uh, the silt goes to the bottom and keeps the water clean. Uh, a couple of pro tips, little things to to to, to be mindful of. When you're wearing, I mean, here in Texas, everybody's got a belt buckle, but if you're wearing a hoodie, don't, don't wear one with a zipper, and uh, make sure you cover up your uh, your pants buckle so that you're not rubbing up against the car, shining one thing and scratching another thing. Uh, what else? Uh, that's about it. Um, I hope this helps out. If anybody had any issues with their painting or trying to recover it, um, this is... Uh, uh, again, on the uh, uh, 1977 MGB project, um, uh, cleaning up the, the orange peel.